Hello! In this video we will talk about an important topic of handling time-related aspects in stream processing systems. We will start by looking into why Flink supports different notions of time and what exactly they are. We will then describe the mechanism of watermarks that makes it possible to achieve reasonable trade-offs between the latency of the results and their correctness. And in conclusion we will discuss what are late events and how you can handle them. Let's start with the discussion of the different notions of time. As you probably know, most messages in event-driven systems have a timestamp field. But what information does this field exactly contain? One possibility, which is the best in terms of correctness, is event time. Event time is the time when an event actually occurred. The timestamp in this case corresponds to the time recorded by the edge device producing the event. In case we do not have a timestamp of the device, or we cannot trust it, the second best option is storage time. Storage time is the time when an event is ingested by a storage layer or a message broker. This is often the first time that the event is being processed by a well-managed piece of infrastructure with reliable timestamps. Sometimes both event time and storage time are assigned to the event. The latter in this case is used as a sanity check for the former. Storage time in and of itself isn't a concept in the Flink API. It's a term used here solely to distinguish the timestamps that might be injected by the storage layer. From the Flink's point of view, there is no distinction between event time and storage time timestamps. These are simply timestamps already in the events by the time they are read into Flink. The next notion of time is ingestion time. This one is reflected in the Flink's API. You can configure your Flink application to timestamp events as they are ingested. The downside is that they won't be reproducible. If you have to reprocess the data from the message broker, your events will be assigned different timestamps each time. The last notion of time is processing time. The processing time for an event is the system clock time. Here comes an important distinction between the processing time and the event time. While the event time of an event is deterministic and immutable, the processing time is always changing. If you run an event time-based pipeline more than once on the same data, you will get the same results. In contrast, if you run a processing time-based pipeline more than once on the same data, you may or may not get the same results. This determinism and the ability to reprocess historic data is a major advantage for working with event time timestamps. These advantages of working with event time do come at a cost in terms of adding a bit of complexity. When you operate entirely in processing time, then nothing can ever be out of order with respect to time. But once you begin to perform distributed operations on events that have been timestamped upstream, then you must be prepared to deal with out-of-order event streams. Here we see a stream arriving from the left. The event's timestamps measured in seconds are shown in boxes. You can see that this stream is only very roughly in order. Now, imagine that our objective is to count how many events have occurred in windows that are 10 seconds long. Here we can see the first three windows. As each event arrives, it is moved into the appropriate window. But how do we decide when the results are ready? After a while, it seems like we might actually not get any more events for the first window. In this particular case, we have a godlike view of the stream's contents and can look ahead and see that the event with a timestamp of 6 is coming. In real life, however, a stream processor has to take events as they come and make decisions based only on what has already been processed. Eventually, our window counting application will have to stop waiting and produce some results for the first window. We can wait longer and be more confident that the window is complete, or be more impatient and produce results quickly, but with a greater likelihood that they are incomplete. As an application developer, Managing this trade-off between completeness and latency 
is something you want to be able to control. Watermarks, which we're about to look at, are the mechanism Flink provides for this purpose. The watermarks are special metadata events. They are injected by the framework and flow along the main events stream. They are typically injected at the Flink source, that is the connector in Flink that is responsible for fetching the data, but they can also be added to the stream at the later stages. Watermarks carry a timestamp. Any Flink operator that receives a watermark with a certain timestamp will interpret it as follows. No more events are expected with the timestamps that are smaller than the watermark. So if you get a watermark with a timestamp of 15, it means that all of the earlier events with the timestamps from 1 to 14 must have already arrived. Watermarking is not automatic. If you choose to use event time processing in a Flink job, then you must arrange for watermarks to be provided. In most cases, the simplest solution is to use Flink's watermark strategy for bounded out of orderedness. It assumes that events are arriving with some bounded amount of delay. In the example presented on the slide, we expect our events to be no more than 6 seconds out of order. We've configured our watermarks accordingly. So, when we see an event with a timestamp of 21, we can be fairly confident that all events with timestamps up through 15 will have arrived. We can, therefore, insert a watermark with this timestamp. Of course, right behind this watermark of 15, we have a stream record that is late. Its timestamp 6 is behind the watermark. We will look at how to handle late events shortly, but first let's understand how Flink uses watermarks. Flink has two kinds of internal clocks, one marking the flow of event time and the other connected to processing time. Processing time clocks move forward automatically on their own, but event time clocks are connected to the watermarks in a data stream and are only advanced when the watermarks arrive. You, as the Flink developer, are responsible for moving event time forward by arranging for watermarks in the stream. Each operator maintains its local notion of the current watermark, which is the time of the local event time clock. The current watermark can only advance when a new, larger watermark arrives. The way the watermarks are processed is tightly related to timers. Flink lets you to register a timer in the future and execute a certain action when this timer fires. One way of registering the timer is explicitly. In this case, you call respective timer service methods from within a process function with your custom application logic. As you see, there are two distinct methods, one for the processing time timers and the other for the event time timers. The event time timer will only fire when the watermark carrying the timestamp that is equal or larger to the time millis will arrive. The other way to register a timer is implicit. It happens automatically when you use Windows, either defined with the Flinks API or via SQL statements. Let's see how watermarks control the results of the computations from our previous example, counting the number of events in 10 seconds windows. Assume that we used Flink's window API for implementing this program. Window API is going to take care of all of the logic of correctly bucketing the events and assigning them to the correct windows. This is done automatically for you. Moreover, if your application uses event time semantics, the progression of time will be driven by the watermarks. In this case, the event with the count of 4 for the first window will only be produced after the watermark of 15 has been observed. By definition, a watermark is something that indicates that no events with a lower timestamp than the watermark timestamp are going to be observed. But in reality, even after allowing some degree of out-of-orderness and delaying the watermarks accordingly, we cannot guarantee 100% that no such events would be observed. To deal with this, applications can define policies for handling late events. 
By default, once a window fires and produces its result, the state of the window is cleaned up and any late events are going to be dropped. However, you can choose instead to allow some bounded amount of lateness. In essence, this parameter gives you another trade-off between producing the results with a reasonable delay, but also being able to correct erroneous computations. The downside is that more state has to be kept around at any given moment in time. So this parameter has to be used with care. With sufficient allowed lateness, the 6 is added to the first window and an updated result is produced. Of course, it means that your downstream systems have to be able to deal with such updated, enhanced results. To conclude, Flink supports different notions of time. With event time, events can be out of order to a certain extent, but still yield correct results. You can also expect deterministic results even if you have to reprocess the stream multiple times. If you want to use event time semantics, you are responsible for configuring watermarks and deciding how to handle late events. Due to their nature, streaming applications must trade off completeness for latency. You can either wait longer to have more complete information before acting, or wait less and reduce the latency. Watermarks are the mechanism for managing this trade-off.